in this episode, we're going over 2021 event planning and everything you need to know and everything you need to think about. Yep. Let's get into Hybrid it. events, going back in person. Let's just get into it. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Event Masters. You need to listen to this. If you want to throw bigger and better events, learn how to monetize and land bigger acts. Yeah, this is where you can learn how to do that. Event Masters. Welcome to episode two of Event Masters. I am your host, Dylan Schenholzer, along with Patrick here. Like we said right before, dude, we're in person. Yeah. It's nice to see your legs. I'm not even going to lie. That sounded weird, but I'm, I'm not. Wait, literally. you wear pants? Yeah. This is crazy. No, so real backstory. Literally, I have never. I joined the team in March. Mm-hmm. The View Stub team. The View Stub team in March. Yep. And. Fast forward to now, we've done some shows together, we've built businesses together, and we finally, I knew Patrick before this, but finally get to meet the entire team here. I'm in the View Stub headquarters. Yeah. This is exciting. We get to do the show in person. So this is exactly why yeah, we Yeah, let us to. know if you want more in person. We'll fly yeah. down Dylan every week. Hey, Maybe. That's yeah. Promise. Or I can move. <laughs> uh, anyways, look, so being as we are in person, we wanted to kind of chat on in-person events and, and the, the comeback of them here in 2021. 2020 was a wash, as we know. And uh, 2021, I think we're going to see them come back and we'll yeah. get into some our thoughts on when and where and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. But we kind of want to, we know a lot of you are going into game planning mode and we want to make sure you have some of the right foundations to, to do so and, and some of the correct decision making going into that. So I think the the elephant in the room for all event planners is is when do you think let's just flat out think when do you think they'll be coming back in your opinion um it's kind of hard because we've been doing in-person events probably since june but here in florida open states there's been smaller in-person events but at a scale when does it come back i would say may how many times do we talk about this a week oh did like every day every day yeah uh, yeah so I, I i think you know I, i'm talking to a lot of organizers every day i am one myself as as everybody knows and i'm looking at you know q3 you know june july mm-hmm. and everything after that and i think you'll start to see them slowly come back and variances in different formats and so we'll talk on a lot of that in this show as well so i mean with that being said it's probably one of the biggest things that you let's just jump right into it is, is what you need to know and learn and make sure you have in place for your in-person event. Um, Cause I'm actively planning multiple and, and the biggest thing that we're all obviously having to figure out is safety. Safety. You know, safety. That's safety. the number one thing we hear. We can't just um, roll out in person, 5,000 person music festival and just think that you can't, or you can't put a <laughs> effort or thought into safety and everything like that. So, I mean, we're not going to get into it or make it any kind of weird politicalness, but there are things that you as an organizer have to think about mm-hmm. when you are putting back an in-person event. And so that a lot is going to be dependent on where you're at in this country, right? Because every state's different. Me in Virginia, we have a 10 person gathering limit, yep. but down in Florida, it's a little we're bit right more right open, now. right? Yep. And then a lot of more states are starting to open back up and they're starting to let live events happen mm-hmm. again. And obviously the biggest caveat to that is what are they doing safety wise? And so yep. I don't know about, about you, Patrick, but I'm seeing a lot of different use or different applications of safety being applied. All of it's the right way of doing it. Yeah. There are people holding events that aren't doing it the right way. Oh, well, that's with every aspect of an event. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I, mean, I think one of the big things that you have to figure out and this goes back, I want to touch on, uh, this goes back to the feedback loop of asking your uh, attendees mm-hmm. what makes them feel most comfortable, right? Because you could obviously go spend all the money on all this rapid testing and have an entire doctor Pods. team. Yeah, you can have the yeah. entire doctor team on staff, but meanwhile, your attendees are like, I don't want to do all this. I don't mm-hmm. you know, I don't have, I don't feel the need to do all this. Like, yeah, check my I don't enjoy this. Yeah. It's not enjoyable. Why would I come? <laughs> So we, and we're not saying that to get rid of safety standards. I just think mm-hmm. it's very practical ways. And, I, and I'm seeing a lot of folks do it right. Me and you have a mutual acquaintance who just rolled out a, a pretty decent in-person event. And they just did rapid testing at the site. Mm-hmm. And there's all types. I, I'm not a doctor by any means. I wouldn't go into that. But the rapid testing available now is efficient, quick, and it can be done right there. Mm-hmm. Also, the temperature checks. Yeah. You get a temperature check for, like, nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, doing – Putting a lot of those protocols in place for your event mm-hmm. will make a lot more people feel comfortable, and it'll also help you know the the, poli- the political side of it feel more comfortable bringing these live events back if 
we are doing everything yeah. we humanly can. Oh yeah, today. and we we could touch on the 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 PR, the news side. If you are holding an event, you're worried about that as well. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a later. big thing because uh, a lot of organizers are worried right now mm -hmm. with uh, what are people gonna, what, are, what yeah. are people going to think? It's mm -hmm. well, it, it's one who cares. It's it's not really about what people think. As long as you, as the organizer, are doing everything you can, and have everything in your power, or doing everything in your power to put safety first. It's going to have mm -hmm. to happen. You're going to have to have socially distant or social distancing and physical distancing. Yep. You're going to have to require masks in a lot of places. And or there's things that you can put in place like, you know, social distancing masks, of course, the, the rapid testing, the, the thermometer checks, the temperature checks, like all of that mm -hmm. stuff should be, is going to be standard mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> yeah, probably for the, the first 12 months and, and everything opening up. Absolutely. And I think the organizers mm -hmm. need to make sure that goes into their budget. It costs money. Yeah. Rapid testing costs money. It's yeah. not. It's not worth cheap. And then, and then also making sure that's a great experience too. Yeah. Because, you, um. Yeah. That. I mean, that could create a whole extra line for a rapid test, or it can make the lines longer. And then you have to think about: Do I need to, you know, please my customers while they're standing in line to get tested, or to go through this other tent? You know. So it, it becomes a thing about. Yeah. It becomes an activity over the overall experience, and you have to. And we mm -hmm. can touch on that here in a minute because I do want to touch on that. But the experience factor of how we go through these safety protocols is going to be important. It's going to add, it's going to bring or up, it's going to be the catalyst to a good event or a bad event. If you start off the event with a terrible rapid testing experience, mm -hmm. the rest of it ain't going to go well. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, we're not going to hammer home on the safety side of things. I just know that as an organizer, it's got to be for top of mind right now. It's got to be, you top have to mind, figure yeah. out what you need to do in your particular state, the different things that you can put in place and you have to account for it in the budget. Mm -hmm. like you have to. You can't get around it. Budgets are going to increase, and you have to make sure that that money's flowing. Yep, yep. I think we may have a, a little bit of audio difficulties. I'm not sure though. We're looking. We have a. You don't know. Yeah, we're having our producers. If you're hearing something, <laughs> don't look at it. What do we have? Some. We have some issues. Does it, does it sound good? Oh, we're moving. We're over here. We're over uh, here jamming. I I'm sorry. I thought I thought it was technical difficult. Are we getting a special appearance? <laughs> this is a special appearance, dude. For those of you who don't know, wait, where are you going? So obviously we know him, right? This is Patrick. I'm Dylan. You guys have yet to meet Spencer. Spencer is a CEO and the co-founder of Vuto. You want to be on later shows. We will, we will definitely have him on because we want to obviously talk about the history of Vuto and everything like that. He's obviously an integral part in that, I would imagine. Uh, but he's one of the people helping us bring back live events. So nice to meet everyone. Thanks. Thanks for the special I'm not sure if they could hear you, but oh, they can hear you. Thanks for the special appearance and letting us know we're we're hitting the mic. We're hitting the table. I'm gonna pull my hat. Talks too much. Anyways, look. So with with that being said, uh, we won't. Like I said, I won't hammer home on it. But you have to implement this stuff into your budget and things like that. So uh, the next that we want to segue that into, you know, events are going to take on a different format. You know, the mega yeah. conferences are not going to be able to come back for uh, at least another well, they're year they're coming back on a small stage because you know we have a you know even a couple people watching this we we do small in-person 50 to 75 person events yeah. and those are good and then it's going to kind of range i think we just had a lunch meeting with someone that's doing a 300 person yeah. in-person event in-person concert so they're coming back slowly and then depending on the logistics of the event you could do that so. yeah i think i think the, but you hit the head and nail on the head of, of the format of the event is probably changing a little bit where the mega conferences had 10, 15, 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to figure out how, cause you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to find the world's largest venue to be able to socially distance 15,000 yep. people. And then that would just, that would be a mess. Yeah. So you're going to have to figure out how to bring down the in-person environment to a, a smaller number. Mm -hmm. And then that lends itself perfectly into yep. taking it hybrid. Right. Yep. And, and, and I've been using the phrase here lately with a lot of organizers and myself and things like that of this, this craft event, right? What craft beer did to big alcohol, craft events are going to do to the mega festivals and the mm -hmm. mega conferences, right? You're going to see the smaller, more intimate, which is, in my opinion, more valuable, but that's a topic for another day, mm -hmm. bringing and bringing that environment to a much smaller one, less in people, less in person, mm -hmm. and then doing what we do best and taking Hybrid. your entire also <laughs> virtual and offering two different experiences. Yep. Um, and so that, that's what we want to, you know, the formats of these events are going to change. And I think we have to understand going into that, what, how, what format best fits this new environment for your event? Mm -hmm. And that's understanding that that goes into some other things we'll chat on later in other shows about 
know, making sure you have goals and objectives and, and aligning mm -hmm. your experience with those objectives. But understanding the different formats out there of these events and, and mm -hmm. understanding that you can go hybrid and it's not going to hurt your event. Yep. I don't know how many times yep. you hear that compared to me, but everyone swears that going hybrid will hurt their event. You and just got to be more educated on how to do it well, in let, the proper let, way. So let, let's talk on that because some of these people watching probably agree with well, what I just said. Well, and I, wanted to, I just want to take a step back real quick because, you know, a, kind of the, the safety protocol, um, you know, we do see some bigger events coming back like Endless Summer Nights, our friend John, um, or even like the Dr. Phillips Center where you're staying at the yeah. hotel. Um, they have it laid out. If you start looking at these events that are already happening and seeing how it like our, our friend John with Endless Summer Nights, he plans it all the way out where every car is parked and they walk certain ways and it's just beautifully done and it's awesome. So I would say if you're interested in holding like outside event, that's pretty big is look at examples like those on how they did it. Oh yeah. Always, yeah. always copy success. You know, there's, there's definitely clues in Don't all reinvent that. the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Just go, go look at the, the big people who have spent a lot of money figuring this out. Like, yeah. don't, <laughs> us, lot of yeah, us smaller event organizers, like, John, just go. John's going to watch this and he's like, man, <laughs> you guys don't understand what I went through. Well, his 18 hours of uh, trying to figure out logistics saved all of us. But um, so, yeah, logistics are definitely going to change. And then the logistics of a hybrid event. So real quick, let, what are your opinions before actually before we even go into a hybrid event there might be some people who don't even know what we mean by hybrid mm. there's a lot of people saying hybrid. yeah the terminology has been messed up since so let's, yeah so March. let's let's just go I mean, into I'll get that. into it so what is a hybrid event Patrick? well so a lot of people think that a hybrid event is a fully virtual event where you're just watching online and it, it sucks for a lot of these event organizers that didn't know what they were doing first time going online they would search <laughs> hybrid or virtual they didn't really know there's a difference between full virtual platforms that are like webinar style and then there's a difference like hybrid that actually has in-person features like the registration, the analytics, the check-in system, all that. So what is a hybrid event? I mean, it's an event where there is people going to come, they're going to drive, fly, walk into the venue and physically get to engage with the performance or the session. And then there's a attendance that's online. So it's both. And you have to treat them. You got to treat both audiences the same, but also different logistically. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's and it's and I've said this before. It's it's a hybrid event. It's one event with two different ways to experience it. Yep. It's in person. You have an in person attendees and crowd mm -hmm. and you get the interview and you can't wait for us to get back to those. Mm -hmm. And then you have a virtual component. And this is not before we even go into more of that. I want people to understand that hybrid events are not new. People They're have been not, doing. They've, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, how long has the Super Bowl been the on biggest, TV? The biggest how long has the Super Bowl been? World yeah. or hybrid events. The really cool thing is, is like that's what we tell people. They're like, "Oh, I've never heard of a hybrid event." Um, how long has the Super Bowl been on TV for? You know, so <laughs> every um, NFL it, game, not even just the Super Bowl, every the, sports game. The best part about you know one of the the uh, more fortunate things about COVID is the education and how platforms got better at allowing the smaller events and the smaller producers and organizers be able to hold hybrid events before <laughs> um, technology wasn't there. The education wasn't there. There wasn't, you know, the bigger guys were doing it, but the bigger guys were also spending millions. Now it's a lot easier to hold a hybrid event. So. Oh, it's, it's a hundred percent. And I think what COVID did to the industry is brought awareness to this model, mm -hmm. right? Because you, yeah. you were around, you were doing hybrid events and, and building new stuff. hybrid events since it was 2019. Cool. Yep. Yeah. It was before it was cool. Now it's almost going to be a cool thing to do. Well, we started back in 2018. Yeah, it's even cooler, right? Because I didn't start doing we were, hybrid events. We were before. filming. <laughs> and uh, but I mean, nonetheless, I think you know, understanding what a hybrid event is first. So mm -hmm. it's it's coming back, and, and we're talking about bringing back in-person events. This is bringing back live events, mm -hmm. and and the format in hybrid aspect is in-person and virtual. It's one event, two different ways to experience it. And they mm -hmm. definitely have to be logistically done different. You have to mm -hmm. put more emphasis at your, you know, live events. It's funny. Most live events already had a camera crew at them. Yeah, I know. They're funny. You, you, were never left how how many times for everyone that's watching this or watch or listening to the replay, how many times have you went to a business conference and you saw on the TV the speaker because you're sitting way in the back, right? Or <laughs> how about at a music festival or at a sports game, you you know, you go, you go, oh, I want to go get a beer and a popcorn. You walk out in the hallway and you could still watch it on because they're just feeding the loop. They're already filming it. The film crew is already there for most of these events. We're not so. asking so we're not asking you to like throw in a whole extra 
production in your budget. You've already yeah. hired these people, mm -hmm. so put them to just add them, add an ask well, to yeah. their to do well, list. Well, also, what's really cool is you, you if you're holding a really good size event, you're probably already you know hiring an AV company, and then all you have to do is like, hey, pop out a camera and yeah. just can you send the RTMP stream to a broadcasting software like us, like ViewStub. Yeah. Dot com and they should be able to add it on without you know completely destroying your budget so and then the the, the return on it we could yeah know, so could well, i want to move into that because you know now we we've lined out the hybrid format and, mm -hmm. and things like that i want to because some people still you know like i touched on right before some people are hesitant and and they're like well, you take away from my in-person side and yeah, all of that. how many times i know uh i see michelle coming on here michelle knew spencer and i when we were first getting started and, and she probably knows, you know, uh, she introduced us to a few people, even a few people that she connected us with, they were scared because they thought that people were not going to come in person. It was going to sabotage their in-person attendance. I have, I have a whole Ted talk on that and I won't go into this cause it'd be a rabbit hole <laughs> um, and I'll get really hype and I'll start shaking yeah. the camera and things, but it's, you know, if, still if you're the worried about people not coming to your in-person event, there's you a, probably have a, a bigger a problem. Bigger problem yeah. Then oh they, they chose to go virtual because they don't want to go to your in person event. Mm -hmm. If you if you give if, if they found that excuse to not go, it's because they don't want to yeah. go, and it's because your yeah. event is not that great. Mm -hmm. and I, I will or stop or, or yeah. not that great, but or they're just uneducated. I think um, Eventbrite did a study in 2018 or 2019 that most people when they hear about an event or they hear about a brand uh, festival tour. Um, if they watch videos of it, they're 67% more likely to go because now they're educated on it. It's not that they may not like it. It's may actually offering a virtual solution because you got to think if you have an audience of, you know, a hundred thousand people, you can't fit all hundred thousand people in there. So some of those people may be following you on social media, may have opted in for whatever, may have bought some of your products, but they're not just going to go to your event. So having a virtual component is actually beneficial is so what we learned. Let's talk about those benefits because there's, there's more mm -hmm. than there's several of them. So I think the first one is. Yeah, just your whole audience isn't going to make it. You, yeah. Venues yeah. have four walls, even if you do them outside. Yeah. They literally can't hold anything more. There's yeah. fire code people. Mm -hmm. You can't hold. So my venue here can only hold, let's say, 100 people. Mm -hmm. why, would, why, you, why would anyone as an organizer limit mm -hmm. their event's reach? Why mm -hmm. would they, if, if it's a conference, right? I want to get my education yep. out to as many people as possible. Yep. Why would I limit yep. that by just saying, "Oh, I'm only going yeah, to"? Yeah, even to even if they did want to go, they they couldn't because you could sell out. Yeah, you, know? you sell out. And so that, we can make another point here soon. That's probably what three or four on the list. It, yeah. Oh yeah, it is yeah. definitely. So the that aspect of it is 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 you're going to have limits. Why limit yourself? So that's the biggest one. It increases your reach, right? Mm -hmm. It gets you out to more people. Yeah. Get your content out to more people. I don't know about Spam, anyone yeah. watching. Yeah, but that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to mm -hmm. use my event as a person. I'm trying to get that out to as many people as possible. I don't put on big old festivals for only a couple of people to see it. I want everyone to see <laughs> it as possible. And it also layers into, you know, prior to, of course, the pandemic, There, every event, I've said this for years, every single event loses money and revenue because someone <laughs> can't come. Yep. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, and then, you don't, and then you don't offer it. Not only, not only the revenue aspect, but the the pleasing of your audience because how, how many people you know have their son's birthday that weekend and they're not going to miss their son's birthday no. to go to your event no. so they're like wow i can't believe jimmy can't have a virtual solution like i can't make it i'm sorry i'm not gonna miss my son like you know you should offer more for us your customers isn't that you know? basically how views dub got started pretty Somebody much yeah to go to an event. Uh, no, yeah, no, it got started where, you know, <laughs> where people came to us and they were like, oh, people are hitting me up on my Facebook group saying they're in California and they're just not going to fly for a four hour event because it's not worth it. And they're working and, you know, they, they don't want to spend fifteen hundred dollars to pay for a fifty dollar ticket. And we're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> ding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and so it increases your reach, right? You can go mm -hmm. beyond the venue, as the cool cats say. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the second one is. Is, is very much a revenue thing. When you can, uh, you yeah. obviously charge for your in-person event that that allows you to charge for the virtual aspect. Mm -hmm. it's, is it price different? Of course. And we can go into that at a, probably a later episode because it's a whole nother. We, we could touch on it real quick. I, I'd see like, a lot of cool things if I, you know, I could so like, share just, some. So yeah, for sure. So revenue is definitely a bigger thing. You can, uh, you expanded your reach. More people can attend your event, which means you can sell more tickets than the venue hold. So mm -hmm. 
not only are you expanding your reach, you're increasing your revenue at the same time. Mm -hmm. So touch on the touch on that, because I think we, we do definitely get asked all the time. Well, how do we price it? Is it different? Mm -hmm. Is it this? Is it that? You know, do people buy virtual? Yes, they yeah, do. I think um, the pricing is definitely one of the most vague questions because we get that almost how, how many times do we hear that all yeah, the time. Every, yeah, every and it, it's like, oh, you know, my ticket's fifty dollars. How much I should do my virtual? And I'm like, well, you have to look at your content and how long the event is and, and what other people are doing in the space. And, you know, and then it also comes into the pricing model. If I could get into that is, you know, if you can only fit 50 people, that may be an opportunity to really focus on the value. Hey, only 50 people can come. This is exclusive. So you got to think about those things because then if it's more of an exclusive experience and it's sold out, we already talked to um, the, we had a lunch meeting, the 300 person, the 300 person, it's pretty much sold out. Um, the 300 person concert that we're talking, I think they only have like four or five tables that they want to sell outside of that, that they, they, they had to open up because it was already, it was already booked. And um, we hear, and they did it with Nashville nights too. So, um, you know, and they were able to say, Hey, look, we're sold out. Even if you want to come, you can't come. And then they were able to have an opportunity to price the ticket higher because it builds the value psychological in someone's head. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, I, I think that'll be a whole show. And that's, that's more revenue right there because, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you can only have 50 people and you can even price the ticket the same, I mean, Spencer's big thing was price it the same. I mean, it depends, it really depends, but yeah, you know, I mean, you got to think like if you're holding a conference, it's a $500 ticket and it's in Florida and someone's in California, like, yeah, they're going to spend $1,500, $2,000 to come. That $500 they're looking at is like, I don't care. Like I'm saving money. I'm it's um it's money. It's convenience. I get to spend time with my family. Like it, it's it's more of like they you could even value at the same time. And then but maybe we could get into like the the building the value of the ticket and whatnot. But um, I would say yeah, the the, the bigger part of the revenue. So yeah, I mean if you're expanding your revenue. If you have, if your venue is limited, right? You can only sell 100 tickets, no matter what your price is. Or I can sell. 100 tickets in person, another mm. 500 virtually. And what I did, regardless of what I charged for it, 100 bucks, I just created a whole extra mm. revenue stream in my event, which mm. is a whole nother topic of its own. Yep. But you create your event, you have to create revenue streams. Yep. And then and this is one of them. Yeah, let's go into like, just a real quick revenue stream because um, I, I know we don't want to go too long on this episode, but um, sponsorships, that opportunity. No, because yeah, you because, did. Yeah, because if you do just a full in-person event or, you know, you only can show those sponsorships to those eyes that are coming physically. So being able to tell a sponsor, hey, you know, I'm going to have another thousand people in the live stream. You can have another thousand eyes on your brand. That That's a selling point. Yeah. That's what they're buying pretty much. Buy attention. Eyeballs, the, yeah. attention and eyeballs. And, you know, so that's easy because not only that you're making off the the, regist the direct registration of the uh, event, but you're making it through sponsorships because you have more opportunity to show them off. Yeah. Another because, vehicle. Yeah. You, a bigger audience. You expanded the reach, which now allows a lot of other things to happen. So mm -hmm. the revenue of going hybrid and like we said, it goes back to we're not adding in a bunch of extra costs to go hybrid. Mm -hmm. The ROI, if you've already spent it. You might have to pay a yep. couple extra bucks for the live stream. Mm -hmm. You've got to actually live stream. And even, if, even if you don't have a camera, you could go spend fifteen, two thousand dollars and you could as long as you market the right way and put a good timeline like we talked about last show. <laughs> you can make sure that if you never even had a camera on site at your event, you could go spend two to four, five, maybe even seventy five hundred dollars and get that money back or at least break even. Yeah. And that's eyeballs and yeah. and um, awareness and, and satisfying your customers that can't come. So it's things to think about. It's a so it's a low cost of entry at the end of the day, whether you're already doing it or it doesn't take a whole lot. Like you yeah. could in theory, like some of our phones are better cameras than a lot of these cameras, but you mm -hmm. kept a couple hundred dollar camera on a tripod, you can do a hybrid event. You don't yep. need a F seventeen yep. camera live stream. Yep. We had a guy that uh, just went live and um, you know, he what do you do? We we've had a bunch of people that did um, iPads for the first event, these smaller ones like fifty people. Yeah. Um, even the test day kind of goes back to the feedback feedback loop but testing it like you could get a nice live streaming camera like let's say you do workshops or even like a small performance in a venue your artist and you have 75 people coming you could go get a camera for 500 dollars or go to our partners at ptc optics to buy a, 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 a 1800 dollars camera and you could use it for each one and zoom in zoom out it's yeah. not that expensive and yeah you pay for it back in a, in a couple shows even if you did a free event 
you're still you got marketing you could have people opt in online you could remarket them contact them afterwards upsell them during the stream back to the sponsorships and overall just the satisfaction of the customer retaining that customer yeah so, so we touched on expand, expand your reach go beyond the venue that's a benefit the benefit or another benefit of course is the revenue driven from that mm -hmm. A one that I don't think a lot of people talk on, and I think you touched on it quickly, and I've seen mega festivals pull this off very well, uh, is FOMO. Yeah. Everyone who joins virtually gets to see the live event. Coachella did this years ago and they crushed, they sold out next year's event in like a day. Yep, it goes back to that 67% of people that watch a video more likely to come after. So, it's the FOMO ahead. aspect. No, yeah. and after, I don't think a lot of people are talking on that because they don't they don't see it. But I've seen I've seen it. I've had people watch on live stream and then go, "Hey, man, your event looks cool." Mm. Like they, it, it's different than a sizzle reel at the end and all that because we know that's edited. We know that's like supposed mm. to hype you up and what people want to come. I actually get to watch the event, and then what do you think is more likely to happen next event? Oh man, I can. I'm going. That event. Yeah. Looks super cool. yeah. Or hey, I can't go. I'll just watch online again because I was good too. <laughs> like it's convenient. Yeah, it was convenient. So, it's all about awareness and educating your audience. You need to do it in multiple different ways. No, we always, always educate, always be educated. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every aspect, how to use the platform, yeah. all that. Kind of what we talked about last week. But I think FOMO is a big one that most people miss out on. They're missing out on. They're wow, looking. At look at Sarah right? and John in the front yeah. row. Completely. Have an amazing time. They're, right. looking at, yeah. they're missing out on long term revenue because of a short sighted, short sighted. They're, yeah. they're being short sighted, being closed minded, and, and closed minded. Yeah. And, long -term revenue. and we've done what in 2020, I think we were talking about earlier, we've done like 800, 850 events. And the people in the that we saw do those events did better for the most part uh, than the ones that were one sided that just did the small workshops yeah. in that scenario, right? Um, but we have seen the data that hybrid events do do better than just in-person events and, and, and for the most part, not all of it. Don't well, come, on hundred percent. That of comes them. down to so, the organizer at the end of the day, just because you do hybrid doesn't mean you'll succeed. That comes yeah. down to you and yeah. your event. And we mm -hmm. can talk on that the whole yeah. other day, I'm, but so we did talk about benefits. Yeah. I, I want to talk about just like one thing real quick, cause it's, your show. it's the education <laughs> of a hybrid event. Like we we're saying like the benefits of hybrid event. But those benefits only come down to, that's I would organizer. say, well, one of the, yeah, that's organized benefit. Well, we talked a little bit about the what attendee benefits. Yeah. Let's, let's just dive the, deeper. Yeah, the, the convenience. The, the convenience overall, like, you know, if, if I'm not going to go drive three hours to see an artist, like, yeah, I like the artist, but I don't like them that much. Like, I have sure. other things to do that weekend. I'm going to catch up on work. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out with my wife, whatever it may be. It may be good for fifteen dollars. Hey, you know, cool. I'll, I'll I'll put it on TV while I'm cleaning. I'll put it on TV while me and my wife are cooking dinner, and we could just listen. Like, and then it, that it's the convenience aspect of it. Absolutely. Know? And also, people want to support you if, if you're if you're in entertainment or sports. I mean, we or even business too, because we have you know starting out coaches. We we work with a wide range of coaches that are doing work between twenty five tickets to five thousand dollar tickets, and you got to think like, hey. It's convenient for me. I want to support this coach. Here's twenty five dollars, and I may learn like a new marketing tip, right, yeah. on what they're doing. Yeah. So it's the convenience aspect. I think is the best. Yeah, because I don't have to leave. I don't have to literally leave my house. And if you're anything yeah. like me, like as much as I love events and love people and things like that, I don't want to leave my yeah. house for a lot of <laughs> to not have to like literally leave sweatpants to be able to attend, mm -hmm. basically to experience an event. Mm -hmm. It's hugely convenient. A lot of people actually would opt for that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, but then it also goes into a convenience factor, and then it also is price, right, or, or cost, because you just laid it out, a $500 conference, mm -hmm. and if you live in another state, that's another 300 airplane, 300 hotel. Yeah. You know, we're starting to tally and up. And the time food. to plan around yeah. it, the time that you may miss uh, doing working on other projects. Eight, um, like and now with family, yeah. yeah. It's just like, now you have to pay a babysitter, now you have to pay mm -hmm. your dog sitter, now you have to pay for a hotel, so, plane. Yeah. Like, oh, so if it, it was, back to the organizer standpoint, as, as an organizer, you want to please your attendee. Like we talked about last show, you are not throwing an event for yourself. You're throwing an event for what? the attendee. That's blasphemy. <laughs> No, he's 100% right. I agree. With that. I need a T-shirt that says it's not about you. But uh, no, 100%. I think it's 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 all of that, and the, mm -hmm. it's, it saves your attendees and a boatload of money through because yeah. there's a lot of attendees. Everyone has a following, and a part of their following can't afford these events. 
Yep. Why are we Why are we isolating them? Because we want to have a five hundred dollar ticket, which I get it. Mm-hmm. But then, why? Some people can't afford it. They can't leave. They can't do that. Now you're layering in for the foreseeable future. People won't come. They're mm-hmm. They're worried about coming. There's pandemic things going on, and mm-hmm. you have to. You have to take that and, and understand. Not, maybe it's just not. We, we how many? Um, I know you know people. You just said it yourself. Like we've met so many attendees that say, "I'd rather not go in person. I don't want. I don't want yeah, to be around people." Yeah, yeah. 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 So, no, I'm not here to shake I'm, not, I'm not a people person. I just want to go and I want to listen to that speaker that I know, or I, I just want to listen to the artist. And I, I just, I'm, you know, I like to hang out at home. Yeah, I mean, I, so. I think there's massive benefits both for an organizer and for the attendee to mm-hmm. have a hybrid or a virtual yep. solution to an in-person event. Mm-hmm. And I think that is going to be a, a catalyst in, in, in a format that events adopt going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, at whatever scale you want to do it, at, right? Obviously, like I mentioned, like the Coachella, they, they're they having millions of live streamers because they have millions mm-hmm. of their brands huge. But yep. even the smallest baby event, you could have literally be a new coach who can only sell five tickets. Mm-hmm. You still have probably following that don't want to come in person. Yeah. You can still if you can sell three yeah. virtual tickets, it doesn't matter. You, That's they, how you start. You got to start somewhere. Just like, you know, we just started this show. You know, we're growing the fall. And you just started your company. You just started your music festival. You just started being as an artist. Anything. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. So, and then, you know, uh, rolling into it. And then we could go to the next subject. It's like the convenience, but also the satisfaction. Yeah. Um, you know, those three people that are going to join, if you're just starting out, they are just happy. Like, Wow. You know, John, the speaker, cares about me. He went out of his way to make sure that I can experience it if I can't come in person. Yeah. I like John. You know, I'm probably going to go to John's conference next time. <laughs> nah. Yeah. John nah, thinks about me that I can't yeah. come. You yeah. just lowered your marketing how, how budget much, for the next event. How much branding and trust and credibility and overall just quality of a person and brand you portray when you go out of your way for your audience? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. Yep. Um, so... I would like I would like to move into this one real quick. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so I'm here for- those are the benefits for the organizer and the attendee. But let's talk about actually successfully doing it. And and a lot of times that we see is educating people. It goes back to you know oh well I sabotage my event or or you know whatever it may be. But you have to educate people that you're even having a hybrid event that you could join two ways. We've seen a lot of people. Whether, you know, um, even even during COVID, we have some people that are doing, you know, 50 person events, 100 person events, and people know about it online. And they, and right now they don't even know if they could come in person. So you got to think about that when you're opening back up and you're like, hey, watch the live stream. But they may be in the same city. You have to let them know that they're doing it in person and and vice versa. So in your marketing, you have to let people know that there's two options to attend. And not only that, but you have to let them know how to attend. So, and you got to think, especially back to the COVID thing, like, oh, like how is the venue or what venue is it at? Is it safety? So like you have to educate through your marketing. Okay. Yep. What you're going to do is you're going to sit at a table with only three other people spaced out six feet and you're going to walk in this way and not too much detail, but you do need to educate people because people are thinking about that returning to events. Oh, am I going to be shoulder to shoulder to people or am I going to have to stand alone 50 feet from people and I'm not even going to enjoy talking to anyone? So like you have to educate people, you know, what it's like. And then if they attend virtually, you have to let people know, like, I'm, are you going to just like send me a Facebook link? Like, do right. I just watch? Like, how do I watch? Right. So you have to let people know, one, that there is multiple options to attend. And then two, you know, through your marketing and awareness, how to attend. I, I don't know. 100% absolutely. Because they will not buy a ticket. They may think, hey, can I talk with other people? Can I can I vote on stuff? Can I engage? And then if they don't know that when you're you're marketing, then they may not buy a ticket. So. No, and, and, I, and I've seen organizer after organizer after organizer. I convinced them, right, or someone on our team or whatever. I've seen it outside of you stuff as well. They, they, they were convinced to do a hybrid event. Mm-hmm. They, they added that virtual component, but they never talk about it. Yep. It's like, yeah, guys, we what? just went back. We just went back to people look for convenience. People can't go. People know they can't go. I mean, people, have, yeah, people can't go. You have to let them know. And you have to educate it. And, and I guess this this comes back. This is almost a piggyback on last week, too, but it falls into what we're talking about and, and what you need to do in your 2021 event plans is you have to talk about it. You have to tell people what you're doing. You have to say, look, we're going hybrid. Everyone wants to come in person. Do it. We're here. If you want to, if you can't come or won't come, right? Here's your option, and you have to promote them and treat them and treat them both with the same respect, 
right? Because they're mm-hmm. they're, they're value in both. Mm-hmm. There's value to you and there's value to them. And you have to organize it on you to educate your attendees because some of them, they don't know what hybrid is. Like they yeah. don't know that term. They're attendees. You, you may not use hybrid. You can just, yeah. may, may in your marketing, just say, hey, come in person or join us on the live broadcast. Use terms that your audience knows. And then, and also just know that it's going to, it's going to be a good thing. It's not going to hurt your event. I want to, I want to make sure folks understand that because it's, I've never, never once had a bad experience with going hybrid. It's not, it's never hurt my in-person event. Yeah. And like and I said, you market the right way. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if it does hurt your in-person attendees, attendance, you and got bigger there, problems. Yeah. There's other problems you that you should look at. Yeah. Not because yeah. you went virtual. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's, it's a whole nother thing. So I want people to clearly understand that. And it's your job as the organizer to pass on the advantages that me and you just talked about and laid out mm. to the attendee. Yep. Look, look, man, I yep. get it. You can't afford the nine hundred and ninety nine dollars yep. ticket. Well, it goes back to the feedback loop. Remember, yeah. when you're when you're planning a hybrid, well, it's that timeline. You want that month or so and feedback. Hey, if I if I add a virtual live stream and you can watch three sessions, how much would you guys pay for that? Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. Oh, guys, if, if I'm going to offer, you know, I, I'm allowing 200 people to come in person and I'm allowing X amount, whatever, for live streams or whatever logistics that is, you can ask people and then you'll learn if you're going to sabotage your event, right? Maybe a bunch of people are going to comment, hey, um, I don't feel like watching. I really want to come in person. Can you get a bigger venue? Then you know. Or maybe you have a lot of people that comment and say, hey, I can't come anyways. I got a lot of stuff. And then it's like, oh, snap, I do need to do a live stream. Yeah. And, and, and I know this sounds similar to what we chatted about last week, but understand that it's coming from a place of these are things going into 2021 live event planning and bringing back in-person events. Yep. You need to be thinking about mm-hmm. like you need to be giving yourself that time and that market time or the time to market, the time to promote, the time to gather feedback. And these are things like the reason we're bringing it back up is because of that. It's things that you need to do now. Mm-hmm. So you have a successful event later on. So, you know, we, we got to obviously as an organizers think about safety and protocol and things like that of, of, of course, dealing with the pandemic, whether yeah. what that looks like is different. To every what event, we could but do I'm, is uh, real quick. We can mention um, this weekend's event, the website, how he has the guidelines. Yeah. That's really cool. And it's, yeah. Um, so we, we have used of right now or going into it and what actually prompted some of this conversation as well is because we are going and doing and a part of a, an in-person event at the Super Bowl this weekend. And it was, mm-hmm. it flat out came down to the education on the website that we, we mm-hmm. specifically laid out what to expect at that event. Mm-hmm. And it said, here's what, here's the protocol. Here's what's going to happen when you enter the door. We're telling the attendees what's going to happen, what to expect, wear your mask, do these things, mm-hmm. socially distance, you know, things like that. Uh, he had it right. The, the one that we're working with this weekend had it right on the website. How ideal is that? Right oh, there. cool. I know that um, I know I, that I do have to do all that, that it's going to be safe. I'm going to have phase. Uh, I, so ideal. Yeah, what ideal. are some, I want to, because I have one in my head. So I'm curious as your thought as well. What are some ways that organizers can safely bring back events, but also create that interaction and engagement again? Because obviously, and I might have worded that question wrong because I just thought of it, but there are, Maybe and I'll give my example, but there are ways to, for you to bring back an in-person event to where you said, well, am I going to be like 10 feet away from everybody? And yeah. talk or anything like that? Or am I allowed to talk to people? Mm-hmm. Am I allowed to go in a room with them? And there's, I, I saw this done really creatively um, through a couple of my friends, and there's variations of this, but being able to have almost that colored wristband idea or the sticker idea, the red, green, and yellow, like green. Oh, cool. yeah, that's a good idea. You know Super good idea. Uh, this is, we're getting very yeah. practical here. <laughs> These are things my brain is going through as I uh, yeah. look to throw some festivals and things later this year, is how do I how do I make the experience engaging as an in-person? Yeah. You know, people aren't. We don't, want to, we don't want to create that gray area of like, what am I allowed to do? Am I allowed to talk yeah. to Patrick? Does this guy want to shake my hand or is it, does he want to like a, avoid me right now? Should I yell at him? So, we, so it goes, but it goes back into uh, like clearly educating your attendees. I want to educate your attendees, your attendees on how to interact at the event. Mm-hmm. And so a cool concept I've seen and one I'm going to probably do personally is the the wristband idea, the sticker idea. It's, there's just the, it's the red, green, or red, green, or red, green, or yellow. If yep. I know my color today. Like green is like, hey, I'm open. Like I'm, I'm socially distanced. I have my mask on, but I'm open to communicating. I'm, I'm good with, you know, being a couple feet away and yep. things like that. I don't, you know, I'm not worried. I have, mm-hmm. I've been vaccinated, things like that, right? Uh-huh. And then there's yellow that says, you know, I'm a little shy. No, you know, yeah. just stay away a little Caution. bit. Caution. Right? But I'm still open. I want to uh-huh. talk. Like, I'm, I'm inviting, but, you know, keep your distance. Uh-huh. And then there's red. 
Which mm-hmm. I don't, if you're red, you probably shouldn't be in person event, but either way, that's like, hey, man, mm-hmm. I'm staying in my corner. Like, I'm, I'm here for the food and the entertainment. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, implementing things like that in your event is a very pragmatic way to uh, help your attendees at your hybrid event or in your person mm-hmm. event and things like that. And, you know, there's things that I, we left out of this episode about 2021 event planning, things like that, because I can go up rabbit holes and I want to talk later on how to create better events and things like that as organizers need to think about. Um, but, you know, I think that pretty much those are the two big things. You have to figure out the safety side and you have to figure out your new format, yeah. whether it's hybrid or not. You maybe don't. But I'm not saying hybrid is like the, the thing you yeah. have to do, but you have to uh, more or it less. It all goes more back important. to the feedback loop. Yeah. If you're if you're coming back, just to touch on something real quick, if you're coming um back to in person you know, one thing you could do is start with the the feedback and then hey you know if, if you're used to holding 500 person in-person conferences start asking people hey if i allow 50 people for my first one 100 people the second one 200 you know start asking people and then and then through there between the feedback and then through educating people you'll be able to return back as long as the logistics make sense you may have to tweak it a little bit and whatnot but how, do you, how many times on the show do you think we'll say feedback loop Feedback loop every it's episode, like every five most, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying that jokingly, but at the same time, it's going to be yeah. brought up everything. Hey, if you guys want to actually, we can maybe even do an episode on full feedback. We can oh, even perfect. maybe create like a worksheet and a timeline for and strategy around feedback. And dude, because if you, if you have the right feedback, you could hold one of the best events ever. Yeah. So because like, it's literally guys, based off what people Yeah. Want. <laughs> if you guys want us to do like a full show and drop very tactical content, let us know. Yeah. Absolutely. Just um, feedback. So, Big, big, big things you have to think about as an organizer. Safety, of course, figure that out. Mm. You know what that looks like for your event. You have to figure that out. There's all sorts of different ways to do it, variances to it. But understand, you have to do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you also have to think about your format. And yeah. maybe it's changed. Like you said, for 500 persons, maybe now yeah. 100. Yeah. Or you know things like that. Or maybe it's you know you're used to doing a 100 person event, but let's maybe mm-hmm. change the format to 30 people in a house in Miami. Yeah. Right. It changed. You have to yeah. look at different <laughs> formats. Um, to to accommodate this new world for the foreseeable future. So mm-hmm. if that is including hybrid, which I, I strongly can tell you to consider it, uh, you, know, you have to think, make sure you're prepping yourself and making sure that, mm-hmm. you know, because there are different logistics to going hybrid. You have to make sure, we, we joke that your AB companies aren't there, but yep. you do have to make sure that's set in place, yep. right? You do have to, like, think a little bit yep. different in the form of how do I get my some marketing, logo? Yep. Like, how do I get my sponsors more exposure? How's that different from mm-hmm. in person to virtual? It's different. Yeah. It really is. So you have to. Mm-hmm. There's some things that you do have to figure out uh, in that capacity. But you know, that's that's probably you know I could ramble 42 more minutes, but obviously we try to keep the show shorter. So I mean, mm-hmm. if, if if there's not too much more to add on your end, I think this is a good place mm-hmm. to wrap this Trying thing to up. Think. I, I just had one more note, and I I can't think on of it right now. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have those all. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we, we are at 32 minutes. I wonder, uh, we could probably take some questions. Let's do it. Well, let's, let's, let's go ahead and, and just wrap up this show mm-hmm. and then we'll go into the Q and a. And for those of you listening yep. to this show on any other platform or anything, we go live. The, this is a live show inside of our yep. community. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, like, we're about to go live with them and ask questions. They can ask us anything about mm-hmm. what we just talked about things that we do here in stuff, whatever it is. So if you're listening to this on a podcast platform or YouTube or Instagram or whatever, check us out on the Facebook, Facebook group, View Stuff Community, yeah. and you can join yeah. live and actually talk because we're about to jam with. Yeah, we're going to do viewers. we're going to do Q&A. And then also, what do we have coming up? We have the mastermind yeah. um, that we are launching here soon. So this is where we're going to create real in-depth content of stuff that we've been talking about, like real tactical content. Like, literally a yeah. flat out education from start to finish on yeah. becoming a flat out event mm-hmm. master. So with that yeah. being said, Patrick, it was another good episode. I think yeah. we got a lot out and uh, I'm excited to continue going. So that being said, guys have a good rest of your yeah. day. Thanks for coming, man. Glad to have you in person.